it was not the normal type of trauma that you see on the road. It was definitely some other encounter that they'd, they'd come across. These people were spooked. What was it that so spooked a family driving along a lonely stretch of highway on the Nullarbor? No one can say for sure, not even the Knowles family themselves. Well, the best way to describe the experience was it wasn't like reality, it was just like, like a dream, but it was real. You couldn't say there is anything out of the ordinary about the Knowles family, Faye and her sons Patrick, Sean and Wayne. But something out of the ordinary certainly happened to them on January the 20th, 1988. They were driving the 3,500 kilometres from their home in Perth to Melbourne. It was 3am. Sean was at the wheel. His brother Patrick was asleep beside him. The desert was cool and clear as they entered Madura Pass in the middle of the Nullarbor. Then, out of nowhere, Sean saw it. A dazzling white light headed straight for them. He told me, hey, Pat, wake up. There's something in front of us. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, wake up and check it out. He goes, look at that. He goes, it's a UFO. Sean panicked, tried to swerve out of the way, but still the object bore down on them. But that was only the beginning. Sean put his foot down and sped off along the highway. It chased us for about a half hour, and then somehow it got in front of us. It must have went around us. And the faster we went, the faster this object went. And before we knew it, this object landed on a car. Next, the unbelievable happened. To this day, the Knowles family are adamant that their car was actually lifted off the ground. If this is right, they were left suspended in mid-air. Sean, the driver, blacked out. The others became hysterical. My mum was crying and screaming, just saying, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. And, and all I just thought was, my God, this is it, you know, I just thought, why us? I've got to say, why us? And all I can remember then was we were drunk. As the car crashed back to earth, Sean regained consciousness. In terror, the family fled from the car and hid in the saltbush scrub. After a while, the object slowly moved away and the Knowles headed to the nearest civilization, the Montebilla Roadhouse. What they didn't know was that Melbourne trucker Graham Henley had been driving on the same stretch of road that night. He arrived at the Montebilla Roadhouse just before dawn just before the Knowles family. This blue Telstar came in in a hell of a hurry. And uh, these three young fellas and their mother jumped out of it. They were all talking at once. And the funny noises that one of them was making, he was obviously scared, witless. In fact, the Knowles were so scared, Graham Henley didn't get around to telling them what he'd seen on the Nullarbor that night. A bright magnesium type of light. It just swerved and veered all over the, one side of the vehicle or the other. And what the heck's going on, you know? So I sort of accelerated a bit more and kept going, and then all of a sudden it disappeared. It just faded almost to nothing. Back it came again, and I thought, ah, oh, goodness knows, it must be a helicopter or a roo shooter or something like this, having a bit of fun, and I never took much more notice of it. But after talking to the Knowles family at the Mundrabilla Roadhouse, Henley did take notice. In fact, he and another truck driver drove back to Madura Pass where they found evidence that seemed to back up what the Knowles had said. Everything was exactly where they'd turned around, the skid marks on the road, the, where they'd hidden in the bushes. One of the boys had cut the, the tops of his toes on the gravel and you could even see the little drops of blood on the, on the gravel and the sand and stuff where it was. The incident and the Knowles captured headlines around the world. The police were called in and the Knowles car was impounded. Experts tested it, but they could find no concrete evidence of an alien encounter. And so that was where the authorities let the matter rest. No, I don't really think a lot of it has been investigated the way it should, but there was certainly, to my, my way of thinking, there was enough evidence to warrant a thorough investigation.
Certainly, something happened to that family that early morning. Keith Basterfield is an independent UFO researcher, and he actually took the trouble to investigate the Knowles case. His report is exhaustive, but it's also inconclusive. The manner in which the whole uh, external factors came to deal with that family, in fact, probably has ruined us ever really knowing because of the competing elements. The media wanting a quick story, sensational story, which is fine, that's their job. The police who were disinterested once they found that they had a cookie UFO experience to deal with. The UFO researchers because they couldn't really sit down to um, quietly explore the case. And the family themselves because they suddenly found themselves the focus of an international effort when they were simply trying to get to Melbourne on holidays. I don't think we'll ever know. Nevertheless, five years down the track, the Knowles family are still sticking to their story. Oh, bloody hell, yeah. <laughs> you betcha. They can think what they want, but I know what, what I know. Family driving across the lonely Nullarbor Plain is chased by strange lights. Then their car is literally lifted off the ground and dropped again by the same glowing object. All this supposedly happened early yesterday, but was it a hallucination or a close encounter with aliens? Well, several other people have reported seeing mysterious lights in the same area, among them truck driver John de Jong, who joins us now from Adelaide. John, are you convinced that there was a UFO sighting on the highway? Yes, hundred percent. Yes. How can you say that? Because of the condition of the people that it happened to. When we got to them, it was hysterical. Well, out of this world. Put it any way you like. I can tell you that I've just seen little green men, but you're not likely no. to believe me, are you? No. So why do you why do you believe this particular story? Well, there's two instances that come up fairly recent in the last few months. One is I was followed for about oh, an hour and a bit by a big bright light, which sounds silly, but I was followed. I was on my own. There was no backup to that story. Um, it did frighten me. I actually kept travelling and locked my cab up and kept driving. It sounds silly, but it's true. Did you think that was a UFO at the time? First up, I thought it was a helicopter doing low flying, um, but no way. It wasn't a helicopter because I checked it out to see if it was one in the area. So that was one experience. Any more? Yes, I had another one just before Christmas. Um, about oh, an hour from where this happened. Um, I was travelling along, minding my own business, and the truck just got uncontrollable. I couldn't drive it. Um, so I just pulled it up very smartly, got out, checked all my steering, and everything was in perfect condition. I took off and no more dramas. So how do you explain these mysterious occurrences in that very spot? I wish I knew. It's a, it's a, it's not scary. It's a mystery that I wouldn't mind solving. It's, it's a problem out there. It's a lot more happening. Do you know of any other drivers who've had similar experiences there? A lot of us talk about them, yeah. What kind of experiences? Well, the sort of things that, like I've just said, the truck just does funny things. You get electrical problems. Um, there's no electricity out there, so what's going on? You, your hair stands up on the back of your neck for no reason. Um, you get frightened. So there's a, there's a whole lot of you truckies who are now believers in UFOs? Well, whether it's UFOs or what it is, I don't know. But see, the thing that... I can't explain it. You see, you see things and you hear things, but no one wants to believe you. Uh, it's hard to... To come on here and explain it, it's nearly impossible. <laughs> Have you ever said to yourself, maybe I'm going a little crazy? No. You're absolutely sure that you've I've experienced... Silly, I've got to be silly to be driving a truck, but that's beside <laughs> the point. <laughs> so what kind of effect has all of this had on you? Are, you? are you more careful when you drive down that stretch of road? Well, we'll be going back again next week. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens next week? Yeah. Okay. So, well, every trip's a different one, but this is one that I would like... Uh, to follow through because it actually happened and if it hadn't have been for the people I wouldn't have worried about it. John, thanks for joining us. Away from the reported sighting of a UFO on the Nullarbor Plain. 
This is despite her second report from a Port Lincoln-based tuna boat that they were buzzed by a UFO. The Defence Department says it won't be investigating. Police also don't intend to test forensic evidence taken from the car of a Perth family's encounter for at least another 10 days. Left to their defence. Trucky Graham Henley tracked down the Perth family in Melbourne today to offer his support for what he believes was a terrifying experience. Graham Henley has spent 12 years crossing the Nullarbor and he's seen some strange things. Today he caught up with the Knowles family to talk about one of the strangest. Whew, you look a bit better than the last time I saw you. Graham went looking for Faye and her sons after scientific reports discounted their story that their car had been damaged by a UFO. Graham was the first person to speak to the four after their encounter and he inspected the Ford Telstar. I don't believe in little green men with aerial sticking out their head. That's it in a nutshell. Um, but I do believe they were interfered with. Uh, I've got my own ideas on it. They were definitely interfered with. What state were they in when you saw them at the petrol station? Absolutely terrified. Totally terrified. Their reactions were totally different to a person out of a car accident. After the reunion, in more relaxed circumstances, there was even a chance to laugh about their ordeal. <laughs> These two guys are trying to pull this fuel in the car. I reckon you've got three gallons on the ground and one, one in the car. <laughs> Graham will drive his truck back across the Nullarbor this week. Emily claims it was terrorised by a bright orange object. As Brad Smith reports, their claims have now been supported by other travellers. It was early morning on the sparse wasteland of the Nullarbor Plain when Faye Knowles and her three sons claim they heard an ear-splitting whir as they were chased by a glowing orange object. The Perth family was driving east on the air highway near Mundrabilla, less than 100 kilometres from the South Australian border. Mrs Knowles has told police at Sejuna the egg-shaped UFO landed on their car as they were travelling at over 100 kilometres an hour. It swung the vehicle around before dropping it with such force it blew a tyre. What about the people? Were they harmed at all? Weren't harmed, visibly shaken up. When the strange object disappeared, Mrs Knowles and her sons Patrick, Sean and Wayne found their Telstar sedan covered in black ash. Truck drivers on the Nullarbor say there have been at least three UFO sightings since Christmas. Graham Henley saw the Knowles family at a Mundrabilla Roadhouse. He confirmed they appeared shaken and upset. I really couldn't explain it in normal everyday terms, but those people were interfered with by something. And today, support for the bizarre story from another Perth family travelling along the Nullarbor. Massive light. It was very, very bright. I mean, it would have to have a lot of power in those lights to light up the whole area, and the sky was lit, lit above it. It was, it was strange. Bright. It, was it was a strange much, phenomenon. It much was much too bright. Experts say a possible explanation for the encounter may be a phenomenon called Min Min, an Aboriginal term meaning dancing lights. It wasn't seem to be there, you know what I mean? It seemed that, I don't know, kind of grabbed the car, the car started to smoke, more or less, the car started to smoke up, it felt like Something was on the car, but I couldn't really explain it. And all the dogs in the car started to go crazy. And inside the car, all the cars started to smoke. You know, it's well in the windows, and the car started to smoke up inside. And we started, oh, it was really... Where did you think the smoke came from? I uh, couldn't really think anything, you know, it's just... You know, what did it smell like? It smelled like dead bodies or something, you know. Like, you know, it just smelled so really foul, you know. It's, Police and locals are puzzled about that too. Both the UFO and the car were travelling at about 200 kilometres an hour when the egg-shaped object lost its grip. On impact with the road, the car's rear right-hand tyre burst. Nobody can yet explain why the blue Ford Telstar didn't flip out of control, killing all the occupants. Nor is there any logical explanation for the almost perfect circular cut around the ruined tyre's outer casing or the symmetrical dents on the car's roof. At 5.30 Western Australian time this morning, they say a bright light appeared above them, picked up their blue Ford Telstar, shook it and then dropped it, bursting a tyre, denting the vehicle and leaving ash inside and out. It was broad daylight, coming the other way, a semi-trailer and a third vehicle. The semi-driver has reported the same amazing story. Faye Knowles and her three grown-up children were in shock when they told their story to Sedona Police. 
Officer in charge, Jim Fennell, related to us the terrifying account of the moments following the Knoll's supposed close encounter. The occupants left the car, ran into the scrub and head. The uh, object came back again and um, circled around and flew off. Do you have any reason to doubt their story at all? Well, I saw the people. They were certainly scared. Uh, they were visibly shaken. Uh, no, I have no reason to doubt that something happened. And also, bearing in mind that a semi-trailer driver and not a motorist witnessed it. This afternoon, we spoke exclusively to Sean Knowles, who was in the car at the time, and he has no doubts at all about his astounding story. When, when it was on our car, once it got the blowout, and we had this, all of us, we had this real weird feeling going through us. How do you feel now? Oh, I don't feel too bad now. The Knowles family have been advised by police to have their car checked out by scientific experts in Adelaide. This is Mike Smithson for 7 News. The Knowles family was today still battling to come to grips with their outback ordeal which has flung them into the international spotlight. They can believe what they want, but what I believe, what I have seen, like I said, if they don't want to believe it, they, they it's can, problem. it's their problem, yeah. The Knowles claim they were hounded by a bright egg-shaped object as they were travelling along the air highway near the South Australian border early Wednesday morning. Yesterday, visibly shocked family members told Seven News how, when they'd attempted to get away from it by travelling at up to 200 kilometres an hour, the object landed on their car and lifted it off the ground. They told how they felt like they were dying, their voices changed and their car was shrouded in a putrid black mist when they opened their windows. Mrs Knowles described touching a spongy object on top of the car before it lost its grip. Wollongong research physicist Glenn Moore says the sighting of a bright light, violent shaking, vehicle damage, the smell and depositing of powdery material are consistent with the falling of what's called a carbonaceous meteorite. As for the other circumstances which defy logical explanation... There are some aspects of it that, uh, that I have difficulty with. Um, uh, I can't uh, comment in detail about some of the, the things they said. Uh, I noticed some confusion as to whether the car was actually picked up or not. I certainly could understand the massive shockwave that would push the car down because in some cases where very large meteorites have fallen, trees have been knocked down. Uh, leaves stripped off trees by the, the pressure wave. It's now a matter of tests being carried out on the dust found in the Knowles car. Forensic police have taken samples, but results won't be known until next week. Of all the attention the incident has attracted, at least one effort is worth a chuckle. The Knowles say their rear right car tyre burst during their encounter, and police and locals say it's a miracle the car didn't roll, killing them. A great promotion for their tyres, perhaps, and the Dunlop company was first off the mark, with this full-page ad worth $10,000 in today's Australian, assuming the Knowles car wasn't equipped with one of their treads. But they got it wrong, all because nobody bothered to check their facts. The Knowles blue Ford Telstar was in fact fitted with Dunlop Grand Prix radials. While there might be a few red faces ducking UFOs at Dunlop, they have scored some additional free publicity. Maybe next week you'll see an ad reading something like this. Now, what about Ford? How can they go past a Telstar being hit by an ET? Astrodadzis, 7 News. 7 News encountered the Knowles car in Woodna on South Australia's Air Peninsula, then hired scientists from the Australian Mineral Development Laboratories to carry out extensive tests on it. The Knowles maintain a UFO buzzed their blue Ford Telstar early Wednesday along the Nullarbor then briefly lifted off the highway, causing the rear right tyre to burst. The terrified family also claimed the inside of the car shook violently and became filled with a foul-smelling mist and a black powdery substance. I swear to God, I'm not lying. I swear to God, I opened up my window, the car started going out of control. And all this smoke, and it was like smoke. I'm not, I'm not lying. It was like smoke. And gases all started coming out. And me and my brother started to go crazy, you know. I thought it was going in my head. 
felt like your game was getting sucked out. Amdell scientist Monty Luke went over the car thoroughly before taking samples back to Adelaide for more yeah. comprehensive testing. Well, the results released exclusively today show there's no evidence to support the Knowles claims a UFO landed and dented the roof or had been responsible for the damaged tyre and material found on the car. Oh, the material that we found on the, the brakes or behind the brakes on the front of the car is, is fairly typical of abraded uh, uh, brake linings and uh, the, uh, the brake uh, disc. So it's, it's quite typical material be found on the inside underneath most cars in Australia. Uh, an and what about that shredded tyre? Will... No, I've seen this sort of uh, structure before. It's uh, quite typical of a tyre that's been driven on. While that explains the damage to the family's car, nobody knows for sure what came out of the sky over Mundra Villa. Although their UFO sighting has been backed up by locals, Others travelling on the same stretch of road and a similar sighting of Port Lincoln. Something did scare the wits out of the Knowles family, but it seems a coincidental tyre blowout greatly contributed to their distress and their bizarre story of cosmic bulldust. In Melbourne today, the family say they stick into their version that's got the whole world buzzing. They're saying, it's sort of calling us lies. And that's not true. What we know what happened to us and did happen to us. There's definitely something out there. Meanwhile, the results of police tests won't be known until the end of next week. Frank Pangello, 7 News. The spotlight has now fallen on one of the most remote corners of Australia. Outsiders have become curiouser and curiouser about sightings which have always held enormous fascination. But the down-to-earth locals on the Nullarbor and Air Peninsula will say matter-of-factly that seeing UFOs is nothing new. But they mostly keep their experiences to themselves because they say no one would believe them anyway. Alan Stewart is the Highways Department foreman at Mundrabilla, where the Knowles family alleged their UFO encounter. He staunchly believes in UFOs after seeing them regularly in the area over many years. I see like stop, move, turn, circles, like meteorite satellites don't do U-turns. He goes straight line, he stopped and turn. Alan, in fact, believes he saw the same light the Knowles family were terrified of a few hours later. There was something, there was a light hanging around. There was some light going across the north, and one went northwest, then it turned. And I sat out that morning, about, well, about two o'clock in the morning, I sat out for about an hour and a half, two hours. And there are many similar case histories. Just driving along at night time, just, just after nine o'clock, I saw this great big light um, hovering in the air. Or oh, don't know how far away, but to me it looked like about 10, 12 k's, and it just was there for about five to seven minutes, and it just seemed to disappear. The level-headed locals all speak of bright lights which travel very fast, change directions many times, are very silent even though they appear close by, and which disappear almost magically. Well, what do you think about that family from Western Australia who had that experience on the Nullarbor? Well, I believe it has to be a UFO. Yeah, I believe it. Mm. Tests by Adelaide scientists on the blue Ford Telstar have ruled out the claim by the Knowles family of Perth that a UFO landed on the car's roof and lifted it off the road. Analysis of black material on the car reveals it's mostly iron oxide, consistent with residue from worn brake linings. And they say the almost perfect cut on the right rear tyre was probably caused by driving a considerable distance on the rim, which may also explain the violent shaking and putrid smelling smoke that filled the interior. The family has rejected the findings and is adamant an egg-shaped object attacked their car early Wednesday morning. The Victorian-based UFO Research Society, the oldest group of its kind in Australia, isn't convinced by the results either. The society is sending one of its investigators to Adelaide to collect more samples and check for electromagnetic activity. These will be sent to the United States where they'll be analysed by Princeton University astrophysicist Dr Bruce Maccabee. This, this family is very important to us because uh, from what we've been able to establish and what other people have told us, they're not the type who would uh, set up a, uh, a fake. In other words, they're, they're basically not interested in UFOs. They're, they're just coming from Western Australia to Victoria and encountered this, uh, um, uh, this what it could be a UFO or whatever it is, uh, national, natural phenomena. South Australian police are expected to reveal results of their tests later this week. Frank Pangallo, 7 News.
Paul Norman and John Octel from the UFO Research Society examined the blue Ford Telstar said to have been attacked by a UFO a fortnight ago. They carried out a series of tests, including one for electromagnetic activity, then took samples from the car. Veteran UFO investigator Paul Norman says his initial inspection appears to back up the account by the Knowles family that something attacked, then lifted the car off the air highway, causing a tire to blow. I am convinced that they were telling uh, that they were seeing a, of an object of some kind and, uh, and uh, they did interfere with their car. The researchers say they satisfied the report by the Knowles family warrants further investigation. So what we're looking for when we're doing these investigations, looking for um, faults in their story. At this stage we've seen nothing at all. Uh, the, what they've indicated in the car is right. And we found the black material, found the markings, the damage to the car, so exactly how they said it was. Uh, they also indicated they were doing 200k, which is impossible on the ground for one of these cars, but we did a test here and we've got it up to 200k's with the front wheels jacked up. So it really um, gives the impression that the car was, uh, or gives the idea the car was actually physically lifted up. Samples taken from the car will be sent to Princeton University astrophysicist Dr. Bruce McAbee for further analysis. However, the results aren't expected to be known for at least a month. Meanwhile, the Knowles family is remaining in hiding in Melbourne. They will undergo a detailed medical examination tomorrow. Members of the family have been forced to seek medical treatment for stress and nervous exhaustion brought about by their terrifying experience. Frank Pangello, 7 News. Yes. And whatever category Western Australia's Knowles family fell into last week, well, you can bet that they're true believers now. Their close encounter took place early yesterday morning on the Nullarbor Plain, an area notorious for sightings, but never anything this physical. Thanks very much for joining us from Adelaide. Patrick, let me ask you first, can you explain to us what really did happen? What happened? Uh, this is where it... Well, we're going along the eye highway in between. It was kind of like on the border of South Australia and Western Australia. We were driving along there and uh, we were just doing normal speed in that. And I was a bit tired. Sean, Sean and Mum were way more awake. And we noticed this light ahead of us and we thought, oh, that's a truck, you know. We all thought that actually at first. And it started to get a bit, uh, a bit closer. But this is strange, isn't it? kind of disappeared like it went off the road and it seemed to you know, kind of fade and jump about a bit and as we got closer it just just kind of seemed to move away and when when we got closer it just kind of come back in towards us all right so what happened then well we just kept on driving and it kind of disappeared next minute you know it was right behind us and my brother started planting his foot. He must have been doing at least 200 k's, and he just started to follow him. So, Sean, you were driving. What did you do? Uh, I planted my foot right down, and I got up to about 200 kilometres. 200 kilometres an hour, you are driving at that yeah. speed? What was going through your mind? I was hoping to get away from the thing. And we seen it in front of us again. So I turned back and the next minute it was up the hills flying and so I turned back again and had a look behind us to see if, see if it was still up there, it was still up there and the next second it was on the roof. It was on the roof of your car? It was on the roof of the car and as soon as it was on the roof my back tyre blew out at 200 kilometres an hour. All right, so what and happened then? As soon as, soon as the car stopped, I just blinked out, and that's all I know. All right, what, what about the rest of you? We were screaming and yelling, and we didn't know what to do, you know? We weren't in the windows, all this black mist, misty, like a smoke and a light, and we all felt really strange. Our voice started changing, and, and everything just went really really weird. You say your voices started changing. Yeah, they... Yeah. It started to sound like aliens or something. Like it was uh, draining, mm -hmm. draining our minds. Was, it was really weird. <laughs> Wayne, what, what was happening? What, what were your thoughts at that particular time? Well, we were going to die. Were you saying anything to each other that you could understand? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, uh, I, mean I said, I'm going to get you all. That's what I said. All right. Can... Can any of you describe exactly 
or as closely as you can, what this looked like. Oh. It was sort of shaped like this and had a round, what's name, looked like it was a yellow and on the side of it looked like it had sort of bird wings and it's weird. All right. Look, could you understand uh, some Australians, maybe a lot of Australians, may not may not quite believe they sure they could understand that you're shocked they could understand that you you were tired but they may not quite no, believe that's not what true. you're telling us no. i don't care but we that's what happened to us you see if they don't <clears throat> want to believe it it's up to them but if it ever happens to them then I and if it, it ever comes on <laughs> then they'll believe it so what do you think now about we what happened to you we don't really know what happened, you know? What do I think? Well, we thought we were going to die. Well, what I think, you know, is either you... I'm not saying believe in it, don't believe in it. I'm just saying, you know, it happened to us and that's... It that's did happen to say. us. And uh, there was a couple of truckies that did say us. They didn't stop for us. They seen us run out the bushes to try to call them over. They would not stop for us because they thought we were abos or something. Because out in the bush, you're not going to stop for anyone, are you? All right, you're in Adelaide now. You're on your way to Melbourne. Mm. When do you head back to Perth? In two weeks' time. You're driving back? No, no, we're not. No way. You're not going to? Like no? I said, I don't know what's going to happen with the car. What do you mean, what's going to happen with like the car? Like it could have radiation in the car. But somebody suggested that to you, haven't Yes. They? So and there's another thing. There's two guys from America. If they didn't believe this, now explain this. There's two guys from America would have come in down here to suss the car out. All right, so what you're saying to us is that you're too scared to drive back That's across right. the Nullarbor Plain after That's what true. happened to you? Yeah, terrified. So you're going by train, eh? Yeah. Okay, well, we wish you all the best and we thank you very much for talking to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, well, and uh, let's hope they get to the bottom of the mystery. Thanks I for joining so. us. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks.